Ask them. Whoever asked the best questions as judged by uh, somebody, I don't know, You're, you guys are the judges to decide the best question of the day, will get these nice shirts. And they're, they're really classy because I misspelled be bold on the back. I <laughs> so that makes them worth more. But uh, So be thinking about questions to ask. Uh, the format, we're going to kind of go through you know, the presentation, but I'm going to be throwing it back to our panelists a lot too. And I'm cool with getting questions throughout. I don't know if they get picked up on the microphones though, so if somebody has a question during the presentation, if that's okay. You can just repeat the question. I'll just repeat the question, okay. So don't be shy. I don't like shy people. Be, be nice and vocal. Um, we're going to go through a lot of common sense stuff. I mean, this is not a crazy hard topic. It's probably the easiest session to take in all week. But for some reason, common sense isn't always common sense until you hear it. Uh, so that's what we're going to deliver today. Uh, and these are the topics we're going to go through. So starting with who we are. My name is Kevin Michalak. I uh, started a website a few years ago called crackberry.com. So I don't know if there's any readers in the audience. People have heard of it, I hope. Good, okay, that's what I like. Uh, so it's a big Blackberry site. We love Blackberry. Um, you know, we cover the news, reviews, and everything in between. We have really big community forums. We have our stores. We sell accessories. We sell apps, too. Uh, we love Blackberry. We want them to succeed. And then I'm going to turn it over to John. Hi, I'm, I'm John Jordan. Um, I'm one of the founders of Pocket Gamer, uh, which is one of the leading websites. We cover mobile gaming, which is a gaming website. We cover mobile gaming, handheld gaming, um, all mobile platforms, um, and portables, DS, Fit, Vita, that kind of thing. And I guess we've been going for, we will be, we will, we'll have been live six years in March. So I guess that's quite a long time for a, for a website. Well, my name is Kai Zanke. I'm a freelancing journalist covering hardware apps and such stuff. Um, currently, I'm writing for Neulings.com primarily. It's a gadget blog, hardware stuff, but uh, I'm also doing something for Spiegel Online. Maybe you know that one. It's the journal, biggest journal uh, news site. And I'm there about uh, seven years now, I'm doing that. Hi, I'm uh, Eric Dupin. Uh, I run a French uh, blog which is called Press Citron. Um, it's uh, one of the most read uh, French blogs uh, about uh, tech and uh, web trends and social media and uh, mobile internet. And it runs uh, since uh, July of uh, 2005. Oh, it's a long history. And I think between I think between all the, the guys up here, we probably have over 10 million uniques a month. So it's a, it's a good crowd of people to, to know and talk to. Um, before we move, move on, one thing I want to get an idea of is the audience. So, I mean, how many consumer app people are there building consumer apps? Lots. Okay, good. Any enterprise people who focus on enterprise apps? Okay, cool. So we can address your needs as well. Uh, anybody who's not BlackBerry app developers, you also do other platforms too, Android, iOS. Cool. So the good news is, I mean, we cover everything. So what you learn today for BlackBerry is going to help you on other platforms as well. You know, in addition to CrackBerry, we have sites for, for Android and iOS and everything too. So what I say speaks directly for them. So that's good. Uh, one thing I want to start with is, is just sizing up media opportunities. And one of the things that drives guys like not, us nuts is when we get email, additional media. And I think knowing that difference is important when you go into, into promoting your apps. So you know, using CrackBerry as an example on the left, Basically, you take an ecosystem like BlackBerry, right? You've got the manufacturer, you've got carriers, you've got consumers buying Blackberries and that. And we're right in there in the middle. You know, we grow with RIM and we shrink with RIM. And so for a company like us, you know, we want you guys to succeed. So, so things that you may not think are even stories because you're just working making BlackBerry apps, for us, they're news. And they help us deliver to our readers what they want. You know, they want to be informed BlackBerry readers, they want to be informed BlackBerry owners. But for us, we want you guys to make lots of money too, because when you guys do well, BlackBerry does well, CrackBerry does well. It's very, you know, it's a self-fulfilling kind of thing. We need it to happen. Traditional media is sometimes a little bit different, where you have your, you know, manufacturers here duking it out against each other, and the media company sort of sits on the, the outside looking in, and they don't really care if it's BlackBerry winning or Android winning or vice versa. They just want news, so they report to their audience. And that's a little bit different, and there's still opportunities in there but you gotta know how to approach them a bit differently. So they might not view as news what, what we view as news. And, and then you gotta know sort of the other niches where John's a great example, where you guys are very focused on games. So you're covering everything, but your news, what you're doing is everyday content for these guys. I think that's pretty fair to say, right? Yeah, I mean, I think we'll probably get onto these in, in other slides, but I mean, the most obvious thing for me is getting emails from people who are making what may be great apps, but they're apps and not games. I mean. I might be interested in it from a personal level, but if it's not a game, really, I don't have time to 
you know, delve into it. If it's not game, it's just going to get deleted straight away. I'm afraid. It's doing it's doing your research up front, and uh, so I think it's important. You know, the, the big takeaway here is just knowing who you talk to. So for guys like us, the journey of your app, you know, from development through initial release and updates, that's stories that interest our readers. So we like that. And then for say bigger media, you know, they're going to be interested in maybe a success story. Contact them once you have 10 million downloads, then they're going to be happy to write about you. But before then, they're not interested. So just knowing the differences is really important. Uh, the next slide is the most important one <laughs> in this whole presentation, so take it in. And when it comes to getting coverage, it's all about you know, building relationships. And uh, before you build a relationship, there's some things you should know about bloggers in general. And this is uh, hugely important. So bloggers are lazy. You know, somehow, even though we're lazy, we're always busy, which I've never figured out, but it's true. Um, you know, we like posting stories. That's what we do, right? So, you know, we always love it when they're first and exclusive, but uh, we like posting stories. That's, that's our passion. And uh, we're social, so if you don't talk to us, it doesn't really help the cause. But the bottom line is, you know, we want to post about your things, but because we're kind of lazy and kind of busy, the easier you make it on us to do the blog post, the better it's going to be. Um, and we'll go through some case, some best examples of that uh, through this presentation. And I mean, common sense stuff. You know, before you reach out to somebody, be personal. Do your do your homework. Do some stalking. Um, you know, it's harder for me to ignore an email or hit delete on it when it says, "Hey, Kevin, you know, saw your tweet about this. Hoping you can check out this app we just did. You know, here's some screen caps attached because you, you took your time to do some homework and, and say something. And if I just get some." You know, dear editor or anything like that. It's a lot easier just to ignore the email and probably get 100 more emails and forget to look at it later. So doing your research is good. And I mean, Kai, do you find that's kind of the case when people reach out to you? It's yeah, exactly. It's uh, I mean, just sending me an email and maybe not only covering the topic I'm about. Just uh, today I got two emails. One was covering uh, clothes. Clothing for female. I'm not into female clothing, so I don't know what this is about. <laughs> the other one, the other was about a car, and this time car and you something else. I don't care. I don't look at it. And on the other hand, if you send me an email and say, "Hey Kai, I have something, and I think you could be interested," then uh, I'm surely going on reading because it seems like it's personal, right? Yeah. And I think when we say you know building relationships, it's not it's not that you need to know you know my girlfriend's middle name and where she lives. That's a little creepy. It's, uh, it's building a good working relationship over time. It's, it's you know, the right amount of communication uh, at the needed amounts and the appropriate amounts. So you know, for me personally, I like getting emails. You know, we're, we're, I guess it's maybe the his, history of BlackBerry where we're used to dealing with emails. So you know, we have our editorial line for submitting app requests and app review requests and that kind of thing. Um, but you know, I've, I've gotten phone calls. You know, I'm always busy during the day. And if the phone rings, and, and I've had developers track down my phone number and call, it's always in the middle. When, without fail, it happens when I'm in the middle of something. And then I get really snappy and snarky, and I'm like, send me an email, because I don't really need, you know, this isn't the way you do the, you do the communication. So I don't know if you guys have had that either, but I know for me, I prefer getting a good quality email versus anything else. And you know, sometimes I get tweets in that, but that, you miss Twitter for a day. And, yeah, well, this is what we just did discussing kind of yeah. beforehand. I, I mean, Obviously, email is, I mean, I think as we said, send an email, don't rely on Twitter, but it's kind of, I find it getting, you know, quite a, a kind of messy line between, because emails, obviously, we get so many, and they can be very, in a sense, kind of formal, because it's very hard to send, to know, to know everyone's name, and, you know, if you're sending out to, to a wide group of kind of bloggers or journalists. So I, I'm finding, and certainly, I guess you guys as, as, as developers are finding, that Twitter is becoming increasingly important. But you can't rely on it because at the moment I'm not really checking Twitter because I'm at this conference. So you know, even like direct messages are not, aren't, aren't good. But um, but it's definitely the relationship is. I mean, this kind of like marriage guidance or something. But, but but it has to be like a long term thing. It's not like you've got an app coming out. You know, I mean, you might have an app coming out in a month, and obviously you want to promote that. But you know, I think you're going to come to this later that you know the best kind of stories that we break are people that we've known in the industry for years. You know, and some of the you know, and some of the times, you know, we, I think I'm a bit mean sometimes because sometimes with my f people I'm friends with, I'm harder on their games maybe if I'm reviewing them than people I don't know because I kind of think, well, you, well, I know you can do better than that. You know? <laughs> um, but it is definitely just just that kind of always being in touch, you know, and always you know knowing what people are doing. And, and sometimes I think the, the best examples, I mean, games, I guess, is a much tighter community maybe than some other kind of app development. But um, 
but even just someone, is, they're not telling you it for news, for you to write news about it. They're just saying, oh, we just signed this game, you know, it's going to be really, really exciting. It's, and it's just, that, just passing that information back, backwards and forwards, I find is, is, is the most useful thing. Because then I, I know what I think is news. Sometimes with press release, you get something that's kind of like someone telling you this is news, and I'm just, no, it's not, for me, that's not, you know, it might not be news, it may be, but. I think that's part of the research phase, right, is watching for the kind of content a site publishes over time. So, I mean, if you read, if we read your site or you read a site like Cracker, you're going to see what kinds of stories we do, you know, just the best trick. But, but a really good, a good thing is sometimes, and I, I, we have a consumer site, Pocket Gamer, um, and then we have a biz site, which is kind of mainly what I run day to day, so it's much more um, kind of business to business. But sometimes, you know, so, a, P, a PR person or someone from a company will say, oh, we saw you wrote about this other company, and we're doing something similar to this, or if they're a bit, being a bit more cheeky, they'll say, oh, things much better than them, you should talk to us. And, and that's, you know, that's, I think that's quite, that feeds into that relationship, that gets me interested. Oh, they've read this thing that we've written about someone else. You know, sure. but don't, if you're doing a game, don't say more addicted than Angry Birds, because <laughs> we're not going to believe her. What if it's true? <laughs> what if it's true? Show me with the download numbers. <laughs> if it's true, I want to buy in right now. 20%. Let's, let's make some money. Um, here's a good example. You know, you guys want examples, right? So yesterday during the keynote, uh, mention was made of Bellshare as being, I think, the top developer in the region who's made the most money off Apple. And, you know, part of that reason is great quality apps that fit a good need. He does a good job. Another reason is because he's by far and away the absolute best developer who knows how to work with the bloggers like us. And here's a history, you know, looking through my inbox of emails I've received from Melshare over time and what they're about. And um, I mean, you can see, you know, he's got a new release, there's an update, there's a sale, we want to give away some free copies. He's working with us, right, all the time. It's a relationship, you know, it's not a super in-depth one. I don't know his, where his girlfriend, his wife's middle name, which is fine. Uh, but here's an example of what's in an email, just super clear, straightforward, you know, hi Kevin, want you to let you know this, here's the key bullet points. Hey, you know what's even better? Here's a beautiful looking image and some videos. Use them if you want to or not, but guess what? You know, it's a good looking image. It saved me like 20 minutes of work just by giving me a nice looking image. Uh, how can I not write that blog post? He made it so easy for me, it took me five minutes now instead of 15 or 20. Yes, question. Um, so what I feel that you're getting so many emails and it's very difficult for you to filter out what's good and what's bad. Yes. So wouldn't it be easier for you and for us as app developers for you to provide a template? So you say, I want to know yeah. one, two, three, and the screenshots, I want to see screenshots, I want to see video, I want to see... Yes, yeah, absolutely. Find what you need to know so we can help you and we have some section to write whatever we want. Absolutely. So the, the question there, just to repeat it for the audio, is, you know, why don't you add a submission form to your sites to make it easy to submit apps? Good idea. A lot of sites do have that. Some of our sites do have that. I know some of the other BlackBerry sites have that also, and I'm sure, I don't know if any of uh, your sites do. Uh, I think it's something, like for us, it's actually one of the things on our, on our feature request, or that's going into, into production this year, so that'll be a, a feature on the sites. The thing about that too, though, is it kind of locks you in from building a relationship. You know, so I do like the fact we can communicate back and forth very easily in a straight up manner. Uh, and I mean, for us, we do have people who are monitoring those lines and are, are going back and forth. But, but e whether submission form or email, the big thing here is to go above and beyond with, with the effort, right? Like make an effort to make it easy on us. You know, submitting a big press release, it's like, okay, now I need to read it. I need to create my own bullet points off of it. Uh, you're making it harder to do what, you know, you can do and you know your apps better than anybody else, right? So it's very much a help us help you, but but agreed. That's uh, a lot of sites do have that, and that's something that we will be getting to also. So. The interesting part is that what Kevin said before, the most important sheet was the one that we are lazy, so <laughs> always busy. And what you see here is it's not what you know, it's who you know. If I see that one, oh no, oh no, oh sorry, that wasn't the subject. But it's really really inter uh, It's really, really important that you know the right subject. Give me a hint, what is in this email. If I see the subject and I see, okay, I don't, I'm not interested. I'm not looking into it. If you say, hey, hi Kai, how are you doing? I'm not looking into it because it's my business email address. So write in, I have a new app, racing car game, one version 1.0. And then you give me the details, like here. 
I need a screenshot so I don't have to look at after it. I need a video so I can just look into it like you said yesterday. You look in the, into the first 10 seconds and you decide whether you look more or not. And well, leave out all the stuff like, hi, I'm here, I'm having a good time. How are you doing? What, how was your weather and stuff? Just say, <laughs> hi, nice to meet you. This is my name, this is my company. I'm doing stuff, it's great. Like, I have a racing game, it's great. It has a multiplayer capability and uh, downloaded it, it's for BlackBerry 47. Now what I'm gonna add though is, you know, if you're emailing Kai, make sure you say, hey Kai, I saw you at BlackBerry DevCon in Europe, I was in your session, which was awesome. <laughs> By the way, here's my app, and it's good, you should check it out and give me a good review. So. Just, just very quickly adding, I mean, this is literally, this is ideal. I mean, this, 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 this is your template for, certainly, a, I think we all agree this is what we want to kind of get. Um, I've kind of two bugbears. Um, when it comes to games now, a lot of people on app stores will have like a screen grab and then put marketing kind of guff over it, going great, addictive, and and I can understand why in an app store you do that, but certainly we we just want straight you know straight screen grabs with nothing on them, um, and. It, I mean, I may be a little more kind of strict than than, than other people, but I mean, I, I if if there aren't those screens provided, I, I mean, I've bought games in the past just to get screen grabs if I'm if I think the game's good enough because I don't we don't want those marketing things on there. And the other thing is, often people talk about attachments. I always like to see stuff in the body of a text, like in, in the body of the email. I mean, it's fine to have some people for some reason like to put things as PDFs and, and docs. That's fine, but. I, the relevant information should be obviously, you know, in the in the body of the email. Yeah, straight um, copy and paste job yeah. if you need it. No, exactly. No, <laughs> Make it easy. And, and as I said before, just to just to say, YouTube for me, I mean, certainly for games, um, that's you know, we get so many descriptions of games. It's a twin stick shooter. It's a tower defense game. Blah, 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 you know, it's very difficult to tell. If you, the first thing I do is always straight straight to video. If there's not a video there, I, I unless I know the developer, it's very hard for me to judge what I think about that game. So. Yeah. And the same thing with glue videos. Some people do these kind of long trailers where you have the backstory. Yeah, it's, that's that's great, but that's not very helpful helpful to me. So it should be at least about a gameplay video where it's pretty much you just straight into the gameplay. Yeah, I think video. there's there's almost two types of videos that I like to see come along with this, say, sort of kind of email. One is the the one where the developer is just showing off the app quickly, and it's it's more so for my benefit, right? So I can just see what it's about without having to even spend time. You know, I just get a better idea right away. And, and you know, if that video, I'm not going to use it on, on say, Crackberry. I'm not going to repost it from YouTube out of your account. But at least we know what it's about a lot quicker, so it's helping us save time. Um, and then, you know, if we do our full review, we'll do our own videos for it, you know, depending on, on where we rate the app in our sort of priority list for how much effort we're going to put into it. Uh, but then the second one is, you know, sometimes developers just do really awesome videos. That PNG, whatever, but if I have a PDF, I have to copy it out of it. I have to get make efforts to get the picture out of it because I'm not taking the PDF on the URL on the on my domain. I'm taking a picture, so send me a picture, not the PDF. Bloggers are passionate. Remember that. <laughs> Don't send PDFs. What, what about if we want to 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 copy the text huh? from the PDF? Yeah, the text is okay, but not not the not the, uh, the pictures. Yes. I mean, I want to show them the pictures. I'm, my my uh, visitors want to see the pictures. But if I have a PDF, how do I get the PDF up on it? We'll just attach every different file extension. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you can. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Also direct me to a, to a cloud space and say, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's no problem. Another thing I wanted to touch on quick is you know just in terms of building relationships, since that's what we're talking about for a minute, is um, you know go beyond bloggers and the media. So I mean, an event like DevCon here. Uh, there's RIM people everywhere. I mean, you need to be talking to them. I, I, I don't think RIM has ever published the secret magic sauce for getting your app onto the app world feature in Carousel, but I know it probably doesn't hurt if you know RIM employees who you've met at these conferences who you can email and say, please, please, please put me on the Carousel. And uh, sometimes that happens. So they might not want us saying that, but you know, you're here. Talk to people, get to know everybody you can. Um, you know, the other thing too, we're talking about Twitter earlier, stuff like that. You know, the internet's big on this word influence these days that may or not be related to bloggers and media. So it, it's easy enough, there's tools out there to try to find who are the prominent influencers. So you, know, you can go to a site like Clout and go to the technology category and the BlackBerry category, 
they can see how many Twitter followers they have and you know reach out to them and say hey here's a free app just take it you know try this out I'd love to to see what you you know what you think of it and they might uh, they might not like it so you got to be tactful about it and again build up a relationship but I know a lot of people in the BlackBerry space who just love free stuff so they'll be uh, they'll be more flattered and honored that you reached out to them and, and jump it up and, and jump at the chance to take it and, and then you, you build some you know people rooting for you at the same time Moving on from relationships, unless there's anything else we want to add on that side. Okay. Uh, so opportunities in the app life cycle. So this is this is my theory. I don't know if it's right or wrong, but it's just kind of from observing the history of over time of, of the way things have rolled out. Um, this is kind of where I see the opportunities for app developers to kind of get free promotion out there. Now this won't be free promotion on every website, nothing's guaranteed, I mean it depends on how good the app is, the quality of it and everything else. But again, talking, to, talking about BellShare as an example with apps like Berryweather and BeeBuzz that they've done and been so successful with, you know, this is, they basically are a perfect example of you know, taking this app cycle and milking it for every dollar it's worth, right, in a, in a really good way. Um, so we're going to walk through each of these kind of step by step, give, give you some of the examples again of you know, what works, what doesn't work. And, and you know, we'll continue to add, uh, add to the discussion. And please, again, ask questions if you have any. So to me, phase one is sort of this idea phase. You know, you're thinking about your app, you have a great app idea, or you think it's a great app idea. You know, right then, you have to think about the promotional and marketing opportunities for it, because not all apps are equal. You know, in the year 2012, it's hard to get excited about another flashlight app in BlackBerry App World. Um, you might be building the greatest flashlight app ever, <laughs> but it's still going to be hard for us to want to blog it, you know, every step of the way. So know that, you know, and if you're building a game that's going to be more addicting than the next Angry Birds, that's awesome. But, um, you know, then you if you succeed with that, you're probably going to get a lot of coverage without a lot of effort also. So kind of knowing what you're working with is really good uh, and just good to keep in mind. So, you know, you set your expectations reasonably. And you know, over time, some of the things uh, that we've seen that don't work, you know, copycat apps, right? Nobody, you're not going to get much coverage if you're if there's already a really successful app. Um, you know, speaking more apps than games here, but if there's already a successful, I mean, Berry Weather is a good example, right? A very successful dominant app in the space. You can release a new Berry like weather client, but if we already know all our readers and all of our, you know, the BlackBerry people have bought that app and it kind of looks like it's a me too copycat, you know, it might get blogged a couple times, but it's likely not gonna get the same kind of love from the blogger sphere in general as the established ones. Although if you do leapfrog it, then, then it's probably gonna turn into some good content and comparisons and head-to-heads. Uh, and you know, the big thing here too is vaporware apps. There's a few apps out there that, you know, they just don't do what they say. And for some reason, sometimes they get a lot of downloads, but you know, the, the people with, from people who aren't that knowledgeable of the BlackBerry users, so they think, <laughs> It's just going to solve all their problems. Uh, but then the, the smarter bloggers and that, they know exactly what it is, and it's not going to get much coverage. So you know, again, knowing your ideas before you go out there. I don't know if you guys have anything uh, to add on there that's sort of. Well, I mean, it's definitely, I mean, clones are definitely the, on the game side at the moment. It's a massive thing on, on, on the Apple App Store with, with, with people you know, overtly cloning games to try and kind of, uh, kind of get, the, get the downloads from confused people who buy. <laughs> Was it um, Temple Jump instead of Temple Run? And, and, and clearly, I mean, a lot of those apps have been pulled down now. But I mean, I think partly on the game side, obviously, lots of people are inspired by other games. And I kind of think, as developers, have to be a, a little bit honest. You know, if it, we all know that, that there were trajectory type games before Angry Birds, but the one that everyone knows is Angry Birds. So, if you're doing that kind of game, you know, don't I, you know? I, I kind of think it's a bit false pretenses to say it's to be more addictive than Angry Birds, or 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 to not think that we're going to say, we're going to basically use something like, oh, it's the Angry Birds potentially clone, or, or you know, we're going to, that's the way we're going to describe it to our readers. Um, and I think people need to be a bit more upfront about, that's just how journalists are going to describe it, whether it is, whether you've actually overtly gone out to kind of copy um, a, a game in some way. Um, but I do think that there is, I mean, the whole word clone is becoming, in, in the gaming side, is becoming quite a negative one. So I think it's something people do need to be kind of, kind of quite careful of, even if they're doing it in a, you know, we were inspired by this game and we've added these new features. I think people should be quite upfront about that. Really. And, it, and it's possible, you know, from a business revenue standpoint, you know, maybe there's money to be made with the clone games and clone apps, 
but just from a media coverage standpoint, you're never going to get that. Well, I mean, actually, the, the best example, and it's, it's not really a clothing, we were talking last night, um, there, there's a Swedish company, and they basically worked out, or they looked in Google kind of uh, words, what were the, the most searched for um, game words, and, it, and they overtly, that, that was the whole PR things, they came up with angry ninja fighting, <laughs> uh, literally, literally, it was the top five search <laughs> words, and that was the name of their game, and they did, as a game, it was kind of okay, but then, it was funny, because they were overtly, it said in the press release, this is what we've done, that's a story, you know, I mean, I'm sure they did better in that in terms of kind of down there, so everyone wrote about it, and the game was kind of okay. But, uh. How do you not blog that, though? That is a, that's a funny story. Uh, moving ahead, so, so you have your great app idea, the next thing is building the app, right? You gotta develop it, uh, so that's where you guys do your hardest work, you put in the blood, sweat, and tears, and everything else. Uh, there's a couple things to keep in mind, right? It doesn't matter how good the app idea is, if it launches and it's buggy, or it doesn't work the way it's supposed to work, um, you know, you're going to get low ratings in App World. It's going to get ripped apart, and it, it becomes much harder to to kind of get the momentum going again once you've stalled it. Um, so I mean, you got to do a lot of beta testing. And uh, you know, wisdom from the BlackBerry Storm days that that we saw was when, when that Storm got introduced. You know, it was the first touchscreen BlackBerry. Everything else was sort of this trackball, track wheel paradigm. And a lot of the BlackBerry developers weren't supporting the Storm right away. Yet there was millions of people buying the Storm. So every single blog post we did about any app, if it wasn't available for the BlackBerry Storm also, it was like 100 comments just saying, who cares, it's not available for the Storm, who cares, who cares, like, why are you blogging this that's not available for the Storm? And you know, that was a lesson years ago we learned, and still today we get it happening. So you know, here's an example where Zymat, and they're, they do a good job, they released you know, four new games, awesome new games for BlackBerry, and what are my comments? No OS 7, not available for the 9930. What's the point if it's not OS 7 compatible? So, you know, it might add a little extra time to the development cycle and all that, but trying to support as many devices, especially the popular devices and the new devices that people are spending money on apps from immediately is really important. Does this, this is just a question, sorry. Does yep. this mean that your blog site or source should be more personal? <laughs> In terms of, yeah, part, partially, there should be an OS compatibility. Doesn't matter though. One RSS feed, people follow. You're not going to have people following just RSS feeds for, for uh, you know, specific OS versions, right? So you could do better filtering and sorting. That doesn't matter though. It's still, it's still an article going out through an RSS feed. It's going to get read. You're not going to put it in the headline, you know, Zymatter releases for everything except BlackBerry 7 because that's going to make it even worse, the comments. It comes down, developers have to support as many things as possible. And it's getting really messy right now because obviously RIM's going through this transition of you know, BlackBerry OS and BlackBerry 10 ramping up. Um, so for us, it's really messy. And I, I mean, I'm working on that problem because you know, BlackBerry OS is going to be around for a while. And there's going to be a lot of apps there and a lot of you know, money to be made in that space. But BlackBerry 10 is going to be ramping up. You know, our, our motto is we need to cover everything, but I also need to try to serve you know, multiple parties with the, the two platforms, and then still these various OS versions. So in my perfect world, you know, developers would build for both platforms at once with every title. I don't think that's going to happen. So it's going to be a messy period of time over the next, you know, 12, 24 months until everything's eventually, you know, moves up to, to BB10 platform. Um, but I mean, I just wanted to show, right, something to keep in mind, because if you release it and you're not supporting the big things, you're going to get shredded without any judgment of the app itself, right? You're just getting judged based on a lack of compatibility. And this slide, you can find these charts, I actually don't know if this is the most current stats, on the BlackBerry developer website. And they put this out, it's really important to look at because it's showing you your subscribers by OS, but also your downloads out of App World. And you can see on the left that, um, you know, basically like BlackBerry 6 is and higher is making up only a, like a quarter uh, on the far left there, the subscribers in the, you know, RIM 75 million users. But in terms of App World downloads, it's over three quarters of the downloads happening. So basically, even though the, the number is small in terms of BlackBerry owners, BlackBerry 6, BlackBerry 7 is where the money's being made, right? That's where the downloads are happening. So again, coming back to that last slide where they weren't supporting 7, you know, they're basically not making the money they could because they're, they're, they're they were targeting older OSs that people aren't necessarily downloading with as well. So that's a super important one. I don't have the link for that, but it's pretty easy to find on the developer website. So, um, 
you know, another thing on this sort of development phase front is beta testing. Honestly, over the years, we've seen this as a great piece of content that our communities love. And I see this across a lot of websites where people just love it. So, you know, here's an example where Fixmo, when they were working on their, um, their app, you know, in 09, I think, a couple of years ago, they came to us and they said, hey, you know, can you run a blog post and get me some beta testers? And we did it. You know, again, easy blog post. He got hundreds or thousands of beta testers. You know, he whittled it down to 100 people. And, you know, it was free labor. And he said it's just the bunch of people who, who wanted to do it, you know. He gave them free copies of the apps, basically. And it was the most passionate people and best feedback he could get. Because these are people who are super knowledgeable about the device, right, who want to be doing this. And also, when the app goes on sale, you're basically building up like an army of people who want to promote your app because they feel like they're part of building the app itself. And that's a huge, huge advice, right? And we've seen that happen a lot of times. Another good example was um, uh, SmartGuard, which was sort of uh, BlackBerry Protect before Ring built BlackBerry Protect. And I remember the day we blogged that, um, you know, they got like 5,000 beta testers who signed up over a weekend, uh, which was crazy, right? And the thing is, when that came out, I swear that's one of the reasons why he had a lot of success with it over the, the year that followed, because it was an expensive app. And you know what happens to expensive apps these days, right? It, it becomes, you know, why is it 99 cents? Why can't I get it for less? But there were so many people who we had involved in the beta testing program that anytime a person would leave a comment or a forum <laughs> post or something saying, why is this so expensive? There were like 30 people right there who were just like, it's totally worth the money, buy this. You know, like, you'd be crazy not to. So by using beta testers, which helps build a better app for you guys, you're also building a ton of followers. And I think that's one of the big takeaways I have today is you know, get involved in the community and in the discussion of owners soon. You know, just don't assume there's people here who once it hits App World are gonna buy your app or Apple's App Store are gonna buy your app. Like, try to get the conversation happening early so that once it goes on sale, then all of a sudden, you know, you have people there who are leaving the reviews. You're not even asking them to leave reviews. It's like the reviews just fill up. I mean, I feel like this, this can sound boring. This goes back to the whole relationship thing. I mean, in, in the, I think in the broader sense, getting the press coverage, the relationship with the press is part of a, a much broader community relationship. So, you, you know, if you don't have this kind of, you know, the beta testing, we've, with games, we've, we've seen that quite a lot as well. Um, but the best PR people I find are people who are in the community. They're on Twitter. They're talking about other people's games again. That's good. You know, they're, they're just part of it. And obviously that's hard to do if you're spending your time making an app or, or a game or whatever. You don't have a lot of time just hang around being in the community. But um, <laughs> but it, I think it's definitely worthwhile and, and obviously you can get kind of, commu you, know, you should be in, in to a degree checking out other people's games obviously and in the community and on Twitter. But you know, it, you can get community managers, those kind of people, you know, they're fairly young, enthusiastic, cheap, you know, and, and I think they're really worth, you know, worth their weight just getting your name out there. Um, yeah. And actually, going back to the beta testing, there's one incredible one at the moment. It's a called um, thing called um, Soulcraft from a German developer. It's an Android um, kind of tablet game. Fairly, it's been in development for about two years. They've got fifty thousand people doing their beta test. It's unbelievable. That's I mean, I think it's going a bit overboard, but basically, you know, they they're giving they're giving out the game. Oh, you know, it's an Android device, you know, Android um, for Tigra devices. So you just download the app. Um, but when they put it on sale, I imagine most of those people are going to buy that. You know game because they sunk you know hours into it beta testing yeah it's funny you know like being a, a de app developer isn't just being an app developer it's it's sort of being this very in the community social social type of person and you know not everybody does it but i see the examples again and again where the people who do it well those are people who make the most money doing it so if you're if you're looking to do it as a living and really want to do everything you can to make sure you're successful you have to embrace this kind of a mentality question Oh, question, yeah, shoot. Uh, seeing this uh, uh, army of better testers you have, uh, how, if your app goes from payment after that, how do you cope with the feeling that you have to pay them or repay them somehow? Or what happens if one of those harms you because he was the share of the land? So, okay, so in terms of uh, Repaying. I mean, I guess it's going to be a little bit platform specific too, in terms of getting them a free copy. You mean, or you mean like they want a share of the app? Uh, beta testing or testing an app. Yeah. It's quite the work, I would say. Yeah. Um, and then if you sell and make a fortune, they don't care. They don't care. All the beta testers, they just love this stuff. They're they're the hardcore enthusiasts. 
and you say, you know, like I'm just looking for passionate beta testers to help me build a better app. They're happy to see the app get released. And if you're super successful, make millions of dollars off of it, they're going to be happy to be part of it. And if you want to, you know, if you want to send them a, a free T-shirt or hat or something, I think you can. But I don't think I've ever heard of a story of, you know, the beta testing group coming back and demanding, you know, <laughs> royalties. At least not yet. I mean, maybe now it'll happen. You know, the, knock on wood. But okay. No, I hope that helps. I, I think that's. Um, I don't think you have to worry about it. I mean, there's a lot of passionate people out there. Cool. One more. Yes. Which group makes the most money? So that's, I mean, that's not a question to ask, I guess, the blog or media guys. From, from us, though? So, I mean, it's varied over the years. I mean, um, our, our roles changed, right? So, I mean, like, Cracker itself has an app store, uh, which was there before App World existed. You know, we were selling apps before Apple's app store existed. So in that time period, we made a lot of money off paid apps, right? And, and that was also before apps were cheap, you know, they were, people could charge $25 an app and, and nobody complained. They thought, oh, this is, look at how great this app is. They never mentioned the price once. Um, you know, as, as the models changed, I mean, app world's becoming bigger. So for us, you know, like our, our app store, it's just content for the legacy users who still want it. It's not something we look to as a, as a revenue stream or anything like that. But historically, what we saw were, I would say that, you know, a few years ago, we saw paid apps make the money versus free downloads because you didn't have these advertising supported models and that coming in. I've heard some pretty good success stories now where developers are doing really well off, off a paid app or the, the free apps that have advertising. Uh, there's a few examples that RIM has spoken about, I think, publicly. Uh, companies like um, Tafasa is one of the names of a Blackberry developer, and they have some games in App World that are ad, ad supported, and they did really, really well. Um, better, better. I guarantee better than if they were paid. But over time, I've seen a lot of paid apps do well. And uh, the thing with our users I've noticed is people have a mentality of, I don't want to pay for anything, which is kind of like the Android mentality too. It's like, I want just free apps and I don't want to spend any money. But then once you decide you're a person who's willing to pay, I've noticed the price isn't, a, like it's not elastic demand, right? You charge a dollar less and you get you know double the sales if it was a $2 app going to $1. I always found, once somebody decides to pay, it's kind of funny money, right? You're paying with PayPal or credit cards or adding it to your carrier bill. It's like, it's not the same as handing cash. So if it's $4 or $7, personally, like, I never think about that, right? I think maybe a lot of people do, but if your app is quality, you can charge a bit more. And, and the people who aren't, you know, I, I always think it's a little better to start high and then come back down versus start too cheap because then it's a lot harder to, to raise it back up without it getting noticed, you know? so. <laughs> It also leaves you more merchandising opportunities too. If you start a little higher with your price and then you, you're able to do sales. Uh, one of the things you guys need to be doing though for, for RIM is honestly saying, where's my merchandising opportunities in App World? You know, you guys can't do coupons easily. You can't do sales. You have to actually change your price. Um, RIM needs to fix that, right? And that'll help you guys be a lot more successful where you, know, you can say, oh, it's a $10 app, but you know, today you get it for 50% off. I mean, that drives conversion in stores uh, so yeah, I didn't say that, but you should really be plugging okay. RIM to make that happen. And the other thing is affiliate programs. You know, one of the things that RIM hasn't done on App World yet is put out an affiliate program. So like guys like Crackberry, we're going to cover apps no matter what, right? I mean, that's content for our users. But one of the other things is you want not just Blackberry sites writing about Blackberry apps, you want everybody writing about Blackberry apps. And when they, when all these other sites can start tossing in affiliate links, you're going to see a lot more coverage of Blackberry apps because they're making a few percentage points on it. And you see it with iOS all the time. I mean, those click synergy affiliate links are sneaky, but they're everywhere and it's just part of the internet. I think that's, that's pretty fair. Do you guys have some? I wouldn't say I'm a finance ex expert, but um, I guess the freemium model is uh, at the moment very uh, comfortable, which means if you, if you think your app is really good, just give it away for free, the first level, and all the others you say, <coughs> pay me a dollar or something like that. So. You get the people into it, hooked into it. They say, hey, I like that game. I like it and I, I want to play on and on and on and on. And so they just toss their money into it like in, a, like in Vegas with a one-armed bandit. They're just <coughs> going on and going on. That's why they're so cheap. Or I would say... What would you say? I'm, I'm not sure I entirely agree. <laughs> 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 I, I mean, I think, I think 
to, to a degree, with, with on the BlackBerry ecosystem, you've, you've kind of had this kind of sheltered life where people just paid a lot of money for stuff because there wasn't a lot of stuff out there. And unfortunately, that's going to, I mean, I, I, I would suggest that's going to change uh, fairly radically over the next year. I mean, I think, you know, across all platforms, you, you basically now have a freemium model, which for certain type of games and games made in a certain way, I wouldn't, I wouldn't agree with Kai on the just give the first load away for free and then charge. I, I think there's much better ways of doing it. But effectively, I think you, what, you, what we end up now is with a freemium model, uh, like a 99 cents still works, I think, for, for certain games. Um, and then I think there's like a 10 buck model for the, like the real premium kind of EA dead space kind of games. I think that's pretty much what it's, what it's boiling down to. And the thing about freemium is just, I mean, you're completely right. It's just, you can, it's a distribution model. You can just get it out there straight away. It's, someone goes, oh, I've got this great game. You download it. And I guess we'll see with BBM and that kind of thing. People just, you know, immediately you're downloading it. It's a great game. Here's the link, you know. Starts to build so, virally. Yeah. I guess an interesting point too is, you know, just on the pricing thing before we kind of move on is now you're seeing the cross-platform pricing thing. So we see a lot of times where the app is more expensive for BlackBerry than it is for, for other platforms. And, you know, I mean, I guess like if you can get away with it now, it's good. But at some point, it's probably we'll start to see more parity happening. Uh, I think we have about 15 minutes left. So I'm going to keep kind of plugging through our app life cycle here so we don't miss anything. And still you guys have chances for uh, some questions. So I mean, you've got your great app built to use beta testing. You've gotten all your feedback. You got to launch it. Uh, you know, some of the mistakes we've seen, developers don't tell us anything. They just push it out to App World, and then we find out about it there. Again, we're lazy, so you know we're supposed to look every day at what's new and hitting, but we don't always do it. So, you know, devs are crazy if they don't give people the heads up. Or sometimes we see, a, you know, an app get announced in App World. Then actually announcing your app, you know, we went through that example in the beginning with the perfect looking email, and I think I think that's the key thing is you know following that format, make it easy on us. Uh, one thing we've seen too with App World because there is this sort of leeway or lag time between submitting it and it getting approved. Uh, a few times we've you know pre blogged stuff, so if it looks really cool, we'll blog it because you know the developer reaches out and says, hey, I just submitted this to App World, it'll be live any day. I'll ping you as soon as it's actually available. But if you guys want to tease it right now, tease it. So we'll tease it. And uh, you know it gets a good response and builds up some early. You know, you're in Google earlier. You're you're up sooner. Gets people excited. Just quickly, I noticed you have exclusive there, which I think you, for a journalist, we'll talk about for hours and hours and hours. Um, <laughs> my my own personal opinion is, un unless I don't think exclusives really uh, kind of uh, work in the long term. I kind of think they sound good. Journalists like to go exclusive. In fact, yeah. I was discussing with someone the other day who was going to start his total work, his, his uh, article, world exclusive, and I was like, you're definitely not doing that. <laughs> game, game no um, the one thing it obviously does do is it does piss off all the other sites who haven't got the exclusive, so you do have to kind of be aware <laughs> of that. Um, That's true. Right? And it, it often, if, I never have a problem if like one of our competitors, not we have competitors, competitors, but if someone else, you know, gets a, like a scoop or they hear about a game because they know the developer, and that's fine. I've got good work for them. They got it out first. We'll see it. We'll write something as well. So, but as soon as it says exclusive, I assume that like the sneaky PR's gone behind my back and not told me, and they told them, and it gets a bit messy. So, I generally when people say, "Do you want an exclusive?" I say, "No." I mean, let me know, but don't feel you don't can't tell anyone else because yeah. you, that might you might end up kind of hindering your own app performance. That's a really good you know, point. Other people won't do it, but I mean, but equally, if it's a, if it's a massive game, if it's like Halo who's coming to Android, then I probably do want that exclusive. But that's that's a, a high level. That's kind of when you're getting into the Microsoft corporate PRs or the RIM corporate PR level, and that's you know different kettle of fish. See, so. I need to go add a bullet point to that other slide about bloggers are lazy and say bloggers are sometimes selfish, yeah. right? Because my my you know I'm like, hey, give me the exclusive. That's a good point, right? You're you're taking somebody off, so you got to tactfully choose, you know, if you want to do that or not. And, and to a degree, you do sometimes find that, I think there can be reasons that someone, to say maybe one site is really good, I mean, we're a European site, you're based in the UK, so compared to American sites, they're not going to be so, have people who like football, soccer games so much. Sure. So if, if kind of there's a new PES coming out, then it, maybe that does make a bit more sense, because there's, oh, we'll go with these guys, they're European, their audience is going to be more European, they're going to know about football. Soccer. Totally. Eric, we've been letting you to off too easily now, so you got to throw in no, some uh, I just want to say, when you, uh, when you send an, an app with a mail, which is called exclusive, uh, be, uh, be um, very uh, conscious that you don't have to, to send this mail at undisclosed recipients, you know? Mm. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. Because no, I I've, I've already received some exclusive 
apps with undisclosed receptions. So you don't know who it's going to? It's not exclusive. Uh, it's really right. that's, a, that's a proof. <laughs> it's crap. <laughs> that's a rookie mistake, I think. That's a, that's a good point. Send it to one person if it's exclusive, for sure. Um, app lifecycle, you know, so you maybe get a teaser post, maybe not. The now available post, again, that goes back to what we talked about before. Do your screen captures. You know, go beyond screen captures and put it onto a phone and make it pretty and add some drop shadows. And, uh, the big point here is, you know, I see this happen sometimes, not as often as I like, is if you see sites blogging you and you see sites talking about you in the comments, and maybe it's good, maybe it's bad, don't be afraid to create an account on those sites, say who you are, you know, make it probably your developer name or whatever, you know, check those sites' policies because they might all vary. Get engaged in the, communi in the communication. And you're seeing this more and more on the internet today, even with just media sites where the journalists who are writing articles mm. historically kind of just ignored the comments, and now you're starting to see them be encouraged to get in there and, and engage with the people leaving comments. And that's a great way to win people over. And if people report site bugs on threads, you can say, hey, thanks for pointing that out. We're going to work on it for our next version, and that kind of thing. And you know, if there's forum communities that are active, you, know, you can take the lead. People are going to be talking about your app anyway, so you can go in there and start your thread and say, hey, we just announced this. You know, we saw a got blog. We just want to set this forum thread up as a place for discussion so you can help us make our app better. <clears throat> and again, that, builder bigging, that bigger um, building a relationship with the community is really important. Uh, go through these quick. So I mean, same thing, right? You know, we see apps launch. No matter how much beta testing you do, sometimes there's bugs. Fix them. Now it's a reason for another update. You know, you get a free blog post out of it, maybe. Uh, throw it on sale the same day you announce the update, and now it's like two birds, one stone. You sell more copies. You get reblogging. You build up your developer reputation. Um, depending on the sites, you know, once your app is out, people have more time to use it. You might get the full review. So on a site like CrackBerry, we you know, we'll blog announcements, and then if it's a good app, we get somebody to go and do our manual review. You know, so we go through it, and we really do our own job, and we decide if we love it or like it or maybe don't like it, and, and that's just it. But um, you know, you got to look for all those opportunities for reviews. There's sites dedicated to app reviews. Uh, like I said, oh, see, I put it on here too. You know, you guys should be bugging Rim for to give you the tools to do a better job of merchandising through App World, and you know, things that are going to get the online media to continually want to keep writing about BlackBerry apps. So pushing for that. And again, you know, I mentioned there, when it comes to, to user reviews that are really powerful online, if you engage those beta testers, they're probably going to be the people who write the most knowledgeable, awesome reviews for you. And they won't, you know, they shouldn't want a part of your business either. They'll just do it. And once your app is out there, it's been reviewed, you just want to do whatever you can to keep the momentum going. So sometimes <coughs> that means sales, sometimes that means contests. We, see, we do a lot of contests on CrackBerry because, you know, we want to give back to our community however we can. Uh, so that's the working relationship, right? We give you free advertising, you give free copies to, to our readers, and people love it. Um, you know, and sales, again, I mentioned here, it, it, if, if you do have the paid app model, you know, we found it's better to sort of start high and go lower, because then, you know, a great example is an app like Tether, which I'm not sure if everybody's familiar with, but Tether for Blackberry, or, it was like a $50 app. Um, those guys made a lot of money but you know, they made a lot of it selling that app, $50, half price for $25, because that's a big saving. <coughs> 25 bucks is still a lot of money when you start scaling up the volume. So you sell 100,000 copies at $25, you know, you're, 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 nobody's, I think, gonna be disappointed at that, right? So when you see some of RIM statistics on developers making money, you know, sometimes it's that kind of merchandising and, and price point that does it, but something to think about. Um, this, is, this is a key thing, it actually came from, uh, I'd say the first app developer I know who actually worked at RIM for, for a while. He used to give a sort of a similar presentation at uh, the first couple dev cons. And when he was a BlackBerry developer before, he totally gamed me. Like he conned me into doing blog posts without me realizing. Because he did updates. And he said, you know what? Sometimes I plan out updates that aren't even really doing that much. But it's like I literally kind of intentionally planned to do updates because I knew you guys would reblog it if I did sort of an update. So. <laughs> He'd give us a change log. It wasn't a huge amount of features, but it was enough that you know me not paying super close attention would give him stories. So uh, planning updates into your roadmap was kind of a smart thing. I don't know if I'd recommend that for everybody because these days you want to come out with an awesome app to, to really get the attention. But it's one thing that we saw that worked over time. Um, but I think you know keeping a change log is really good so that guys like us can easily see what does change version of version two, and readers like to see that. Any comments, guys? 
last couple points, and then we'll have a few more minutes for questions. Um, you know, big thing, once you're successful, that's your time to brag, right? So if you, if you do have awesome success, um, tell people about it. You know, it's kind of funny, because these are the stories I think as a blogger I'm less interested in. You know, if somebody says, hey, good news, we've got, you know, 10 million downloads, I'm like, great for you. But we don't usually blog that announcement, because then it feels like they're looking for free PR. You know, it's not that story of the journey, it's the story of the success. But then a lot of media outlets, that's the kind of story they want to cover too, where it's like, oh, here's a great story about a successful BlackBerry developer. So, again, it's, uh, it's, it's one more point in that application life cycle <coughs> to look at. And uh, this is sort of outside, so the whole time this is going on with, you know, the communication between blogs and readers and all that stuff, last point is just monitoring what's happening. So. You know, people are going to be talking about your apps on Twitter, whether you like it or not. And here's again a good example from Bellshare, who's really done a good job of, of everything. They're on there. You know, they're not actively tweeting and trying to build a following, but they're monitoring hashtags and they're watching for their apps to get mentioned. And if somebody says there's an issue or anything else, they're like on top of it, right? So again, it's that maintaining the relationship, communicating as necessary. You know, not being annoying about it, just being really smart and tactful. And um, and that's what they do, and it's been it's been really good for them. So, you know, and again, in terms of promotion, I don't have a magic bullet of how to use Twitter or Facebook or, or YouTube to to drive a bunch of app sales and downloads. I mean, I see different people doing different things. Um, you know, I know kind of our media blogging side of it. So I, I don't know if you guys have any thoughts too of how to use social. It's... I agree. I agree. Facebook is. Tricky. <laughs> I, I think when it before Twitter came out, there was a lot more kind of kind of professional stuff going on Facebook. Now, pretty much now, that's kind of, that's kind of died away. I think it's, it's pretty much all gone to Twitter. Um, and actually, to, coming back to a, a point about how important Twitter is, um, obviously Angry Birds is this enormous enormous success, and everyone goes, "Won't, won't Rogio lucky?" And blah blah blah. But the, um, the one thing they did do quite early on was. They got, they got really into social media, and particularly Twitter. I mean, anyone who said anything on Angry Birds, they were straight on it straight away. And obviously, they have full, they have full time staff doing that. It's not necessarily something a small studio can do. But um, I would definitely think for the next year or so, I mean, Twitter is certainly in the, in the games we see it as you know, kind of really important. Because it's just that, it's that kind of nice communication with an audience where it's kind of fluffy enough that it's not like in your face and it's, you know. Yeah. It, it's one more tool to use, right? Like not being there paying attention to it and using it. It's just an opportunity, it's money, it's potential downloads you're leaving on the table. And, and I think also it's, it's quite a, it is quite a good way of kind of getting in touch with journalists in quite a soft way. You're not sending them a big email about this big thing. You just, you know, as soon as, obviously, everyone checks, oh, well, someone's following me. And, you know, so you're checking out that immediately, they're kind of, you know, you're on their radar as someone, oh, they're following me. And then you just get in there, you know, just to see what people are talking about. That's all. So Pretty everybody cool. should say their Twitter handle so you get followed by everybody in the audience, and then what? Oh, so be saying this, I don't. I have a personal account that, that no one knows, so it's not. I, I just use a company one. But again, that's. I think that's kind of weird. I think now a lot. Of, I mean, you guys as freelance, it's you know the really good freelancers will when we're almost like when we're looking to see you know if, the, if there's new journalists we want to hire and stuff. We you know one of the things we're now looking at can they write? Hopefully, what contacts do they have? How many how many followers do they have on Twitter and that kind of stuff's incredibly important now. Absolutely. I think too, um, uh, when you have to promote uh, something on the, on the web, it's uh, all about content. And uh, we, don't, we didn't speak about uh, SEO. And I think uh, sure. we have to, maybe you have to, 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 to take an SEO expert so as to push content and optimize content about your app so as people read content and talk about your app and uh, download it. That's a, that's a huge point. Actually, even SEO, so search engine optimization, you know, it's always a, a Google term in the past, but it applies to app stores. So, I mean, if, if, if people are in the Apple App Store, Blackberry App World, wherever, you know, you might get on the featured carousel, people might drill down into categories, but a lot of times people just search for an app. So, you want people to find your app for what it does, so you need to make sure the descriptions you're writing about your apps, uh, sometimes the app name, you know, sometimes a worse app with a better name will get out-downloaded by a better app that has sort of a gimmicky, flashy name. So I think that's a really important thing that hasn't been talked about a lot yet, but SEO within apps is huge, right? That's a really good point. Questions? We have like two minutes and two t-shirts. Yes? I 
indication of something. It was kind of a fairly straightforward GTA kind of shooting game, um, cars and stuff. And what they did was they basically took the entire map of the game. Um, it was a paid game. They, they took the map, ripped out all the missions, all the backstory, put it out as a freemium game. So you basically spent virtual money, you spent real money to buy virtual currency to buy guns and stuff in the game. Gave it a new name, put it out. Of course, for us, it's a brilliant story. It's, you know, the headline writes itself, you know, Game, game Loft takes two-year-old game and rehacks it, you know, claims its own game. Got terrible reviews in the App Store, like one or two out of, out of five. And if they just put a press release out saying, we're being really innovative, we're taking an old game and we're making it freemium, then they would have had a positive story, but they just kept their mouths shut and didn't really communicate with us at all. And they, and they got really terrible press from that. So I, I, I think honesty is, is really, because if, if you're not being honest, you know, and someone can find out that, you know, that you've not been honest, then that story is just ridiculously, you know, addictive for a journalist. You literally, you know, we just can't, those are, those are the best stories to write, you know. Yeah, we, live in, a, we live in a world where it's better to just own up, I think, yeah. now. And, uh. If you had a failure, just start new and uh, give it for free away. Or, uh, do, a do, a, or do a demo, uh, demo version and, and let them try so they can see for themselves how good or how bad it is. And, like you said before, get some beta testers in. So they are your group of t your team of promoters who say, and now it's great, now it's good, I like it. I guess that's the best answer, avoid the problem altogether by really testing and making sure it, it launches smooth. I think we're out of time. Um, any final questions and then, no? Was that useful for you guys? Okay, yeah. okay. give us, uh, go do those surveys and give us like high reviews, because then we can say, we had the awesomest session ever. I know I remember oh, wow. some enterprise one <laughs> and who really